Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight we're going to be reading back in Joel again. It'll be in Joel 2.11. His camp is very great. Let's go there real quick. And the whole verse says, the voice, uh, sorry, the Lord gives voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? <laughs> and we know what this is about. This is about the army of the Lord. If you come up here a few verses, one, two, three, four, five. Before them, the people writhe in pain. All faces are drained of color. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation and they do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they are not cut down. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and moon grow dark and the stars diminish their brightness. And if you guys have been watching my videos, you know what I've actually likened this to. It's very interesting here. The Lord gives voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? And then he offers, after that description of that horrendous army that's going to be marching over the earth when he returns, he offers a plea. Return to the Lord. Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and nursing babies, let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. Joel is an incredible book, just a few chapters, but it's got a lot to say. Consider my soul, the mightiness of the Lord, who is the glory, thy glory and defense. He is a man of war. Jehovah is his name. All the forces of heaven are at his beck. Legions wait at his door, cherubim and seraphim, watchers and holy ones, principalities and powers, are all attentive to his will. If our eyes were not blinded by the, oph uh, yeah, the ophthalmia of the flesh, we should see horses of fire and chariots of fire round about the Lord's beloved. Remember, there's a part in the Bible where uh, somebody saw that because I think it was Elijah that played for, uh, prayed for him that his eyes would be open to see it. And he saw it. The powers of nature are all subject to the absolute control of the Creator. Stormy wind and tempest, lightning and rain and snow and hail and the soft dews and cheering sunshine come and go at his decree. The bands of Orion he looseth, and bindeth the sweet influences of the Pleiades. Earth, sea, and air, and the places under the earth, are the barracks for Jehovah's great armies. Space is his camping ground, light is his banner, and flame is his sword. When he goeth forth to war, famine ravages the land, pestilence smites the nations, hurricane sweeps the sea, tornado strikes the mountains, and earthquake makes the solid world to tremble. As for animate creatures, they all own his dominion, and from the great fish which swallow the prophet down to all the manner of flies which plague the field of Zoan, all are his servants, and like the palmer worm, the caterpillar, and the canker worm are squadrons of his great army, for his camp is very great. My soul, see to it that thou be at peace with this mighty king, yea, more be sure to enlist under his banner, for to war against him is madness. And to serve him as glory. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, is ready to receive recruits for the army of the Lord. If I am not ready, enlist me, go to him ere I sleep. And beg to be accepted through his merits. And if I be already, as I hope I am, a soldier of the cross, let me be of good courage, for the enemy is powerless compared with my Lord, whose camp is very great. With a Lord like ours, with somebody that fights for us the way he does, somebody who comes to our aid the way he does, why do we worry? 
Well, the reason why we worry is because we can see this world. It's right here in front of us. We have to interact with this world every day. That's why we worry. That's why we struggle. That's why we have issues. We take our focus off of him. Because our focus is a spiritual focus. We forget how to make the effort to turn our attention back to him. Not a physical thing. Not something we can see and touch. But a spiritual connection. And it's real easy to get caught up in the world and get wrapped up in everyday things. And forget about that. But there's an amazing thing that happens because when we do that, when we look away, when we get distracted, he has this very unique way of bringing us back and bringing things back into focus and getting our attention, getting us ready. He prepares us throughout our lives for what's coming in the future. And it's amazing. We scarcely understand what's coming and what is in store. But we can sure find some hints of it in the Bible. And it really makes us, it it shows us something incredible that's going to happen. That we're even going to play a part in. You guys know Joel 2 relates directly to Psalm 149. Incredible, incredible revelation and understanding. And it's an encouragement to know that our Lord has that already in store for us. And it has been going like this, and everything's been working towards that since the beginning. Nothing has been out of his attention. Nothing has been out of his control. I take great comfort in knowing that my God has full control of everything. That gives me more encouragement and causes me to trust in him more because he has control over these things. They don't happen, nothing happens outside of his control. So I know that what happens to me... It's going to be fine. No reason to be scared. No reason to be upset. No reason to look at the world and and start to get discouraged or depressed or fearful. My God has that under control. Everything that's happening is at because of His will. It's at His command. Nothing happens outside of that. So what we see happening, a lot of people don't understand. Well, why would God do that? He takes everything that happens and uses it for the good of those He loves. So these things that happen are meant for a purpose. Our problem is we always want to know what the purpose is, but we're never willing to look deeper to find it. We want somebody to hand it to us. Well, as Proverbs says, it is the honor, or the, sorry, the glory of God to hide a matter and the honor of kings to search it out. And that is what we are supposed to do as kings and priests, is search out the reason. And what that does is it brings a great deal of peace into our lives. A great deal of comfort and a knowing that no matter what happens, no matter who runs the show, no matter where this goes, no matter what happens to us, now or in the future, our Lord is standing right there, making sure nothing will happen to us outside of our God's will. And that in the end, we will be escorted to those celestial shores to stand in the presence of God, just like he promised, in glory. It is a great comfort to know this. It's a great encouragement to know this. And it's such a wonderful peace to have this knowledge and know that no matter how bad the world gets, no matter what happens, my Lord's got this. And we have to remind ourselves of this remind ourselves of all of this. And that's where reading comes into play. That's where reading the Bible every day comes into play to remind you of how great our Lord is and what's being done for us. This very day, as you're watching this, the Lord is protecting you. His angels are watching over you. And He is directing your path down the road to a wonderful, wonderful conclusion. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.